some people come into this super creative, like the most most creative talents. I'm glad to know mm. quite a few of those. Um, but at the same time, from recent experiences, what I've learned, it doesn't matter how crafty or artsy you are. <laughs> mm. Mm. If you don't have a business format to it, that's fine by some people. Some people, you know, literally just want to succeed as mm. doing right by themselves artistically. Mm -hmm. But I also know an incredible amount of artistic people that aren't seeing financial success just because they haven't got a bit of a formula. Killer Keller, oh, 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 podcast. Killer Keller, official dot com. Street Culture TV. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. All right, tighty. Here we go again. Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or as central as you need to be. Anyone that claims they are, they've not been here before. Welcome, Killer Keller podcast. And big shout out to all the sharers and carers. We're doing it for you. We're doing it for intel, information, passing on of information in the culture, you understand. If you want more of that, then head over to uh, Television app. Free download iPhone, Android for all the sports and art. Where it's mixes, me, Doc, Big Docs, on the Toys podcast that you love to hate. We're here. And we're live, yo. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear. From streets to stage, Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. We have a very good friend of mine. Someone that has brought me countless levels of insights, particularly in the world of documentation, um, leveraging um, the creative aspects of new media. Uh, not to mention a good sidekick, my cohort in what is the graffiti battles. The voice, the sultry voice that you're going to hear will now be face to face with you in the flesh. <laughs> and I love every minute of it. It's the mighty Jordan yes. Grant. How are you doing, Kells, man? <laughs> Lovely to you? see you, brother. All good, man. All good. Oh, God, where to begin with the, the, the insight? sides of your mind like and when I say you know media you're so broad with it I mean you've been documenting UK hip-hop commercial work art street art graffiti you've done you've, reggae yeah reggae, reggae carnival well. <laughs> you know full full-blown documentations how are you yeah I'm very well thank you very well mm. and yeah. work's going all right you're doing all right so. I'll be honest with you people don't air their uh, weaknesses too often I've had a very quiet three or four months man mm. it's, it's been got... difficult that's probably the same across across the board for everyone, you know, lots yeah. of artistics aren't really, artistic folk aren't really seeing uh, their, their talents realised right now, mm. knock on effects of lockdown and stuff like that, mm. but it doesn't mean that any day has been quiet. With the, you know, the happening of the lockdown, which is far away from here, you understand, if it is evergreen content, you know, we don't want to dwell too much on the past, but what, what that enabled people to do is within the comfort of their own expertise, leverage on technology, just ordering it in and seeing what, what can I do with this? You know, you, a lot of them, they, there's parameters, there's guidelines, there's things that you have to learn that you don't just pick up while sitting at home. For sure. You've got to be out and about and doing it, I right? Think, I think lockdown and all of that period, that's the one good thing came, that came out of it is that a lot of people learned how to be more resourceful. In some ways, that's kind of hurt my own business because mm. now you know people are like well don't necessarily have budgets to mm. to put something visual together um and the, the, you know you've been invigorated by learning to use their phones and stuff like that these tools that i've always had in my pocket mm. and always seen the great strength in and so now it is really really good mm. and positive to see people being able to empower their own businesses um but at the same time it just means now i've put the pressure on myself to create something that other people can't create so easily <laughs> See, that's fighting talk yeah, right give there. Give yourself a USP, man. Seriously, I've been giving away too many tricks for free, but at the end of the day, a lot of the time, it's just because they're too easy to replicate. Yeah, well, $10, that, but 10,000 hours, oh, it becomes you easy. Like, you like that fact, don't you? I like, I like a bit. <laughs> 10,000 hours of Because it isn't always true. I mean, there's some things that you're either, you know, hip, you know, habitually good at or instinctively know, and then that's what becomes your USP, isn't it? But you've got to go out there and discover that. I'll be honest with you, with the craft and the level that I'm kind of reaching now, none of it was initially instinctive. Mm. It was, I'm not a natural artist as such. I've always been, you know, they say you're a left-brained or a right-brained person. Are you a methodical thinker or are you an artist and a creative? I definitely fall somewhere between the two of them, but probably more towards the sort of regimented planning kind of side of things. Um, I really had to sort of hon the artistic side of things and 
was never very good at art. I didn't think back when I was young and so on. Art teachers were always trying to push me on and thought I had something. But again, with my art now, there's kind of quite a solid process to it. It's quite methodical. Sometimes I need to fight extra hard to break the lines and mm -hmm. make something where you don't think as much, but creates a sort of a more unique visual. Mm. Yeah, yeah, a different way of looking at things, I guess. Yeah, as I say, it's all quite procedural. Um, but at the same time now, I feel one thing I'm very, very good at is gauging people, mm. gauging their personalities, very good at listening, taking on what is wanted of a project, but then also adding my own flame as well. So, mm. yeah. I, I, now I'm at the stage where I just want to get wild with stuff. I mm. just want to change up the whole format and stuff. Um, I want to, whether it be music videos, documentaries, more serious sort of formats, I just want to now add my style. I think that's what you do. You do the knowledge, you do the understanding. That's one thing that only time can help you grow. And I'm watching lots of stuff. Yeah, real talk. And now I want to add my real character. You've seen, you know, if you've watched any of my footage, any of my uh, my productions before. You would have done without even realising it, by the way, as well, especially if you're in uh, this neck of the woods in uh, street <laughs> culture. You just would have, you wouldn't have even realised it. It's also kind of hard to gauge your own style as a person. You know, mm. how would you describe yourself, even within, within your beatboxing or whatnot? How would you describe well, I think what it, yours, your special talent is or what you do yeah. well, sometimes takes other people to really, really gauge that. Well, I was going to say, and this mirrors exactly what you're saying, Elton John once said, you know, <laughs> Elton John, we never think we say that in pocket. Like but, a vandal yeah. in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> like a conversation in the wind. But it's, it's what he said that really resonated with me. It's like you can have a load of uh, theory, practical, but be ready to put it all in a box. Because once you've learnt that, you don't need it. Because that you've already got all the sum of the parts mm. for you to experiment and find the truest version of you. And if you need something, you take it out of the box. Would you say that would apply within the, the media world? I say, sort of answering it my own way, I'd say that some people come into this super creative, like the most, most creative talents. I'm glad to know mm. quite a few of those. Um, but at the same time, from recent experiences, what I've learned, it doesn't matter how crafty or artsy you are. <laughs> mm. Mm. If you don't have a business format to it, that's fine by some people. Some people, you know, literally just want to succeed as mm. doing right by themselves artistically. Mm -hmm. But I also know an incredible amount of artistic people that aren't seeing financial success just because they haven't got a bit of a formula. Whereas someone who hasn't got artistic sort of creativity or that side of their brain are able to make a lot more money off those kind of scenarios just because they know how to package stuff, how they, they know how to repurpose stuff and so on. That's mm. one thing that I'm trying to migrate between now. So still sticking to my passion projects and stuff where I can really breathe out loud. Mm. But at the same time, also doing stuff within other people's formats that is just formulaic, straightforward. And, um, you know, there's a lot of money. That's one thing I hear as well. There's always a lot of money out there. but mm. It's just you need to find your way to it. If mm. that is your, you know. Everyone trying to survive right now. I'm not finding my way to riches or whatnot, mm. but survival is always good. <laughs> survive. Well, Just to be able to keep doing yeah. what you want to do. <laughs> and, and in any industry, you know, you're calling card as your handshake, being present. Oh, yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you've got the personality to boot as well. And, you know, to, to hear that from you, you know, particularly in this, you know, uh, magnum opus moment in your career, I feel, because you've got all of this, you know, backlog of history and content and things that you've to this point now where you're saying well actually i'm kind of i'm primed i'm ready mm. to go and I'm, i want to experiment on new stuff that's you know i think it takes people all that time to get to that point doesn't it yeah but now i've got that massive sort of archive mm. it's about making the right i see the right things i know it can scare people away the fact that i love variety the mm. fact that one minute i'm doing say, a music video for a reggae project. Next thing, I'm doing some deep content, talking about real people's stories. Mm -hmm. Next moment, I'm trying to help someone's business boost. Um, one thing I notice in my work is that I'm always, I, I take a lot more pride in trying to help sort of grassroots stuff as opposed mm -hmm. to people all the way up there already doing their thing. I just did a video with a, an artist, another struggling artist, mm -hmm. but it happens to be homeless and, you know, the power of the internet and just doing a little quick project with him you know it's already helped him to get other eyes on his stuff uh, that change could be amazing you know uh, even if, who of those 50 extra people that now see his stuff or whatever 
who could potentially be his opening to a successful future. Whereas mm. if I do a video for a random company that's already got bucks coming in. Mm. Which we know. love. We love that as well. Yeah, yeah. hey. It's subsistence living. <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> but some things, like you're saying about, you know, working alongside struggling or new fledgling artists, that's kind of, I guess there's an act of giving back, knowing that that's a horse that you could be perhaps you'd be betting on now that may allow for huge growth and oh, i'll be honest with you i don't even see it like that you don't see it like if that. i can if i can invigorate someone just there and then whether it be you know through teaching them the power of even just shooting on their phone or helping people really understand they are talented beyond their own understanding mm. You know, sometimes that can just be the tool. You know, I, I prefer to give people, sorry for the cliche, but prefer to give people nets rather than fish. You know, I, it's lovely, yeah, to have a building working mm. relationship and for them to say, you know what, if it wasn't for that, then da 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 da. But mm. at the same time, it's just nice to empower people. Yeah, I, yeah. I genuinely believe in that. So, what's the, uh, yes. Perfect. Sorry, just to but, say, I kind yeah. of didn't answer your previous go question, on. but I it's feel like we've pass. already... Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've lost myself. Don't worry. Let's... Hey. It, <laughs> Not yeah. used to being in front of the camera. That's no, all right. We've got the, we, we got the uh, tequilas in to begin with, so, yeah. you know, this this will waver. Um, what do you look for in... On that note, what do you look for in the eyes, particularly music ones? Integrity. Integrity? Straight away. Okay. All the people that I roll with as friends, all the people that... I keep in close proximity, it's integrity. Closest artist that you've worked with that embodies that for you? <laughs> God, it's I don't want to just I don't want to just pigeonhole myself within the music world, but you know, since yeah, yeah. this is a street we, art we and culture broad. movement. Yeah, we can talk abroad. So, several of the artists I work with on music videos, Jazz Kahina, Chester P, mm -hmm. St. Paul, Voice, just any anyone that I you work with. You work grime artists and everything. I mean, it's not, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm just, just, don't tend to stick to I, I, again integrity comes into that you know I, I tend to go with stuff that I believe in that I like the sound of if we're talking music but at the same time I'm not going to try and push a visual or a motive that I don't fully understand or can't mm. grasp lots of the people that I work with I seem to gauge them I guess they feel I do because a lot of people have come back for repeat work mm -hmm. and, but yeah just anyone who, who has a spirit and projects it as they appear and talks real with you and is clear in projecting their thoughts mm. you know it's just, yeah, real talk people, man. They're the best people. They're the best humans. Yeah, you know right? what? Even if you're even if you're fucking up, like at the end of the day, people are straight with you. You can adapt and move on. Mm. You know. Um, hey, even before the podcast started, <laughs> it's like <laughs> just having a bigger bit of a dig at Keller, just about oh yeah, sorry man. Like he was ready to make other plans for the day. I was ready to bite his head off and then <laughs> looked at my phone and realised that I was wrong with the time. So then, you know, you just got to, you got this to, stay, a real one. Got to stay humble. But no, I was ready to have that yeah, motion. Yeah, yeah. I was ready to have that moment with you where yeah, it's yeah. like, Keller, I'm just not impressed with your activities. <laughs> and, you this know, how you operate I, normally. Thought, I thought more of our relationship yeah, and, yeah. you know, don't come back to me sort of thing. It's like, oh shit, I was wrong with the time. <laughs> so yeah, it's not how you fuck up, it's how you recover as well. Absolutely. Um, well, let's get into it from the jump then. So where did yeah. it all begin for you? Like, from creation I'm going to try and breeze through this quickly. There's yeah, so yeah. many different corners and elements to it. I let's, could go off on a life story thing, go. but yeah, this probably isn't the time and place. Um, poignant memory for me. Six years old, first school. It's a bit of a, bit of a difficult sort of uh, setting. Yeah, 1980s was not the funnest of places at times. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, one poignant moment for me was I remember a big bearded guy came into the school. We were all in the school hall and he picked a couple of heads out. The next thing you know, I found out I was going to be on TV. So I was going to be in front of the camera at this oh, point. Okay. Um, it was a show called The Little Green Planet Show. Mm -hmm. It was a bit like British Sesame Street, but the puppets were aliens instead of like street guys. Um, and it was aliens on a ship and every week they had a new letter or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the one I happened to be on was F for film. Do, can we find that on YouTube? Is it uh, you know Googleable? Like, <laughs> Funny enough, I've probably hidden it now, but a long time ago I made a show reel where I actually used that as an intro with some random alien and little me there. And I think it slid into Rodney P introducing the show reel or whatnot. Stop and it. I will try and dig that out. Yes. If not, I will get it digitized and I'll get it up online. But yeah, little me, well spoken me. Mm. We went around the museum in a moving image on the South Bank. Long gone now. See, London doesn't have things like that now, actually. Like, yeah. I think that was probably a two pound gallery or something like that, and they had loads of historical cinematic artifacts and Dude, what's I know called exactly. Zoetrope. Do you know what a Zoetrope is? Yeah. Where they did the first animations. Totally, and stuff. I know that one. And, and I was, they, yeah, go I was, on, sorry. I was just gonna just to 
make sure that we're on the same page here and know what we're talking about. And were those those like kind of museums and exhibition places where they'd have like a small? It was a gallery. Yeah, it was a galley, not even a gallery. Yeah, 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 it yeah, was yeah. literally. They used to be everywhere. I don't know what happened to those kind of spots. They were so good. It, it still felt full. It, there was a lot of lot of stuff to it that I really took influence from, whether it be the actual gallery visit mm. or whether it be being in front of the camera, mm. having to rehash lines, say things a little different way, trying to ignore the fact the camera's there and all mm. that sort of stuff. That set everything off from there. Mm. It wasn't necessarily this whole thing that people get, you know, in this new X Factor generation where people want to be on TV or whatever. It was more, I was intrigued by this whole production process, mm -hmm. you know, and the thought and planning that goes into it. It's not just film stuff and make it happen. You, yeah, fast forward, God, what would it have been? 25 years or whatnot and I was working in production seeing that actually play out loud and characters like that bearded director that mm. I mentioned or producer were people that I was working with wow. was, uh, yeah that, that was what set it off <laughs> that's mad isn't it that you kind of write your own destiny in a way as, a, as, as somebody that it's funny how the smallest of things can have the biggest effects later in life yeah. you know I'm sure that most people whatever job you're doing now whatever your, your kind of passion is even aside of whatever work you're having to do I can imagine there was something in your life that set that off. Yeah. Not just desperation or not just, you know, your career path has taken you up through that sort of mm. pattern. But Do you think people take enough time to check those fault lines? As We're not given enough time in life too. No. Everything, the whole system is set up for you just to push on and become old. Mm. You know, imagine even when you're young and you're, you, kids always say, when I'm older mm. or... You act like doctors and nurses or mm. cops and robbers mm. or cowboys and Indians or whatever. whatever. Like, it's, I, I don't know about so much now. I feel a little bit old these days. <laughs> so, no, so you're not right. feeling. <laughs> but by comparison, seriously, these youth just make you feel old nowadays. Mm. Um, well, technology does that, doesn't it? I do find that maybe nowadays kids don't or the youth don't really carry that vibe so much. They're not trying to rush their age anymore mm. they're quite happy telling you old man i remember working in the school one time and uh girl got, girl got pushed through my door <laughs> by <laughs> really? her mates. Yeah. and she was like uh sir my friends asked me to ask you how old you are i was like oh you know that's not really appropriate God, but, you knew that was you coming know, there right seeing yeah. as i'm not proper proper staff here fuck it what was i 26 or 27 at the time and mm. she was like oh my god that's old yeah Taking a oh, lamb all, to slaughter. It all speeds up, man. One yeah. thing I will say, I always push this to everyone else. Uh, one film I watched years ago by a sister, uh, one of my, no, one of my sisters, well, my main sister's friend. Uh, he put together a film called The Eagleman Stag. Go and check that out. Amazing animation, all completely animated in white styrofoam. Mm. And the whole concept of wow. it is, it starts with a four-year-old guy and it's like Eric or whatever his name is, mm. has just realised he won't have another birthday for a quarter of his life. A quarter of your life when you're four, sorry, when you're four, a year is a quarter of your life. Yeah. Remember how long those summer holidays used to yeah. last when you were a kid? So you felt like time was ahead and ahead of you. As you get older, those summer holidays, I don't have any kids, but I know when people have kids, those summer holidays go in two minutes. Yeah. And so it's a matter of perspective. And it's a matter of uh, every year is a smaller fraction of your life and every year goes that little bit quicker. And so, yo, you, you young bucks, <laughs> you'll be there soon. You'll be knowing, knowing this perspective real soon. And uh, yeah. I think that, in, in essence, is what drives you a lot of the time to succeed mm. or fail, uh, not fail, or to give up mm. a lot of the time. Because there really isn't too much failing going on because you, as you get older, like time does certainly pay its, play its part, but you also, you take those L's as, a, as more of a lesson. Than oh, yeah, L's are wins. Exactly. L's are wins, man. Repur repurpose those. Seriously. We don't have that. We don't have them the as best kids, stuff, though. The best kids, stuff that that I will opposite. genuinely maintain that. The best things that have happened to me in my life and might be a bit of a jaded or disillusioned sort of view, but the best things to happen to me in my life are the, the rottenest things, mm. man. Because you learn from them. Yeah. Super quickly. And even in terms of your own mistakes and so on, just stop calling them mistakes. As long as you're not making them more than once or twice, mm. that's a lesson. Yeah. You've got yeah. to keep that in mind and yeah, remind ourselves that although time speeds up for a reason as well, I think, as you get older, you know. The renaissance Ooh. of... Yeah, man. It's like the plug okay. hole. You know, the closer you get to the bottom of the plug hole, the faster oh, yeah, the water faster goes. Oh, yeah, faster it goes. Damn, Keller, man. Getting artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as artists, <laughs> yeah, actually, sorry. as artists, we do, um, we do have time to observe these sorts of things, don't we? You know, the, and I think people... It escapes people. If you're into business and stuff, keep your eye on the prize. It's money. And we all love money. Uh, and eventually the money stacks up because that's the thing you're focusing on. I think with, with us creative people, 
particularly in your world, as somebody who's behind the lens, you know, the, the time you need to kind of observe. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I think, again, across the whole artistic board, I think people don't ever consider that time that's taken your 10,000 hours yeah. for a lot of people, a million hours, really. Yeah. When you think about the people that are watching this, how many hours yeah. have you done towards your craft? Yeah. People just want stuff put up on a wall quickly. Mm. They don't think about the time it's taken to learn those letters or how to link them. Or, oh, from a graffiti know, point of view? I'm talking about sure. graph side as yeah. well because that's something I observe mm. quite a lot film-wise. Um, anything, I don't think... It's just if you've got a business or say even if you need your boiler fixed, mm. someone's going to come around, they're going to check it out, they're going to inspect it. Mm. They might not even have the right tools to actually even look at it there and then. Now, I'm just going to go back to my van sort of thing. So... Mm. Whereas as artists all across the board, you're mm. kind of expected just to turn up and have it there and mm. then something that I want to somehow help create change in. You mm. know, most projects I do, I'm, I'm giving the development time away for free. Mm. You know, I'm going and sitting on stairs. Thinking or, it through. Sorry, that sounds a bit artistic. No, I mean, I'm sitting at locations, you know, I'm sitting at places where I can envisage it and breathe it in, you know really gauge what's needed at the job mm. sounds a little bit hippie but at the same time for me to best do my work i need to prepare yeah well it's, you know there's hundreds of hours that you can spend even oh thank god for google maps and stuff like that now mm. any filmmakers that ever need to spot locations cut off your recce fees yeah. people don't want to pay you properly yeah do your recce's on google maps yeah. and you can screenshot. see it from 3d yeah. screenshot phew, gone yeah i love that so but yeah the preparation time so and the time it took to even build that thought process and that understanding of stuff isn't recognized no I think people need to stick by their guns and make that more present now. 100%. Add yeah. that, factor that into the value of what you're either charging what, what, or what, what... What did it take you to get yeah. to even making this podcast? And mm. this is a side sport for you, you know? Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily the mm -hmm. direction you were coming yeah. from. You've reshaped things, but how long did it take to even get to this, this point of building trust with people enough? Mm. You know, and what is a... You know, with your main podcast, is a sport that doesn't need to be showcased or mm. doesn't feel the need to be showcased or give stuff away free. Mm. How long did it take even just to build that trust to be on your 500 or <laughs> 501 or second yeah, or third yeah, episode, yeah. you know? Where are you, baby? Respect. Yeah, man. How many of you will do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, caveat, well, footnote, and <laughs> I'm coming to the same spot that we're here. You know, you're a keen blader. Uh, there's no dolly around here. He's literally on the wheels moving around with a camera. Um, and looking at graffiti as an example of how long did it take to do the letters, how long did it take to think tank an idea to come to a place of recce or documenting something or creating a music video that time of thinking you know when break dancing is in play olympics on the way and you see these movements happening with people you know you're you're there documenting it to the same value that it's taken them in time to create the moves and Ooh, okay. do you know what i'm saying yeah, that's like, a nice angle you like know that. and often it feels like wow it's just a given of course it's a great video because why would it not be with somebody of the experience? It's the same with a breakdancer. They wouldn't be in the circle if it wasn't... Mate, some of the best moves in all sports have been created by mess-ups as well. So totally. much like people will freestyle in whatever sport they're involved in, that can then become part of the repertoire. You're talking about skating. Yeah. When I first started skating, okay, the tools were a little bit more limited, mm. but in turn, that progression and people pushing the boundaries has allowed other people to then develop the tools mm. that then in turn develop the sport. Now... <laughs> you think 25 years ago we would yeah. have been thinking about something actually no 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 maybe skating's a bad example because back then we were rugged it was all about like just hammers it was all about the biggest mm. tricks mm. going balls out on these yeah. little pieces of plastic on your feet yeah as opposed to now it's a bit more refined i think also with skating is the core group is many older folk it hasn't mm. really translated to a youth mm. market we're trying we're trying a popular but market. It's about being able to freestyle. It's about being able okay. to. So whilst you're on your skates and you know you realise there's a notch in the rail and you're about to slam your face off that, like like you're going to trip on that and slam your face into the concrete yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Or in battles, if someone comes to you with a bar that you weren't expecting and you've got a retort with that, or filming and I didn't know that they were going to go left, they go right. Mm. It's all about actually. I think what lots of the craft is is being easy with it so that you can f roll with the fuck ups. Roll or roll with the sorry, too much profanity. Roll with the unexpected. Roll with the unexpected. Yeah, <laughs> and and still make that look good. And the best people in all of their corners, yeah, of anything really, mm. are able to do that. Mm. You know. But again, that's knowledge. That's background knowledge. Yeah, I think there's a certain disposition of person that can do that more easily than others. But yeah, yeah. I've had to definitely craft myself at 
you know, sitting back. I'm like, for example, I'm intentionally speaking quietly and calmly now so that I can process my thoughts. And that's something that I learned from another part of life, though. I had uh, quite, quite a serious injury. Um, do you want to get into that? Was, can we get into yeah, that? Yeah, I suppose we could do yeah. briefly. Yeah. It, that was that was what helped make my decision on where I wanted to go career wise. So mm. I guess that kind of, yeah. Um, only a short podcast, so I'll try and be brief. I basically got whacked over the head massively hard with a blunt tool, uh, trying to defend my girlfriend one night. Friends were about and so on. And, yeah, it just didn't go well. I ended up with frontal lobe bleeding on my brain, fractured skull at the back and hemorrhaging at the back as well uh, from falling backwards, smashing my head on the pavement. Uh, this the guy that's been through car windscreens, fallen off roofs, like all sorts. But, yeah, that was the one that got me. Wow. I was only, only 21 at the time. Um I kind of had the world and my still my youth in front of me at the time. Mm. But unfortunately, everything sped up. Like I'd, I'd been living in France for a year, snowboarding and so on, living my best life. Came back to London in the summer. I was trying to earn more money just to get back and do that again. Oh, yeah. You know, live life easy. And, uh, yeah, that stopped me in my tracks. And unfortunately, life had to completely change from there. How long did it take to recover from that? It happened in 2004. I was back. No, sorry, 2000, and th was it four or three? 2004, I think. I was back to paid employment. No. Oh, it doesn't matter. It took about three and a half to four years to get back to paid employment, to earn in any kind of money. Um, so that was a year and a half of bed rest, basically just staring at the ceiling. Not too much I could do. My faculties weren't fully together. Even my memory was shot. Um, but then on the flip side, I ended up building my stamina up enough to be able to attend a rehabilitative course mm. that helped both pull back all of my cognitive faculties, but at the same time went on to further realistic job finding, mm. career sort of, uh, what do they call it, vocational profiling. Mm. And so I ended up deciding to tie back into that old knowledge of, or that old want to work in production. Mm. Couldn't quite reach that at the time because long enough hours weren't going to serve me well. No. But I ended up working in an art centre uh, at the Barbican that ended up when I built my stamina up enough, I started approaching through one way or another. You might hear the full story on the other podcast. Watch this space. I'm doing, yeah. the, doing the tour at the minute. But, yeah, um, in one way or another, that... Oh, see, there you go. Mine's tripping. Head injury. Blame really? Can you, do, you, do you notice it when you're... Oh, man, everything that I do on a day-to-day -day is still... Not with that in mind. I'm not trying to hold on to past pain. No. Holding on to trauma like that. No, 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 no. But in terms of the steps and the things that I've had to learn, like, for example, my brain went back to such a basic mode of sort of processes. Cognition is your, your handling and processing of emotions, your understanding and deciphering of information, even just basic planning, whether it be internal or on paper or whatnot. Mm. Everything goes to pot. And so... Again, through that course and through lots of the stuff, because they were basically an anger management. Mm. Or, it was like a high, high school timetable, but for fixing your brain <laughs> in general. I had to go back to a baby-like mode wow. in so many ways. So I've had to, what do they call it, pre-morbidly learn how to do these things that we naturally inherently got mm. as kids growing up, developing. How, how you store memories, how you develop relationships, how you don't take things too deep when, when you don't understand something mm. or whatever. All those things. Sorry, man. Yeah. Just have to go off for a little cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's nah, okay. all good. Yeah, you know it, that'll be the edit, right? It, that'll be the trailer edit right there. <laughs> it's, everything that I do now is part and parcel in knowledge of mm. where I've come from and what my limitations are, understanding those and working around them as well. Yeah. Uh, but I've always, again, like I, I said before, everything that's gone wrong in my life, anything that's been a wall in front of me I've always tried to use as a positive I wouldn't ever go back and change that now nothing you know ah, why it was brought on by kind of someone else's loud words I couldn't have done much else to have changed mm. that scenario at the time dealt with the cards at the time and turned it into what in essence was a career mm. I actually with those few years out got a little bit more stability in lots of ways yeah. you know that in these hard times might not have been afforded if I'd have just kept ploughing on or yeah. stayed out snowboarding they kind of, in a real fucking horrific way, reset a level of, well, lifestyle, for obvious. Mm. But like you say, you know, it it gave you, it drew a line in the sand, I'm guessing, of Safara as well. 
and give you more insight to yourself and more Bro, I, I literally wanted to go back snowboarding straight away anyway. I thought as soon as I get my head back together and I can stay awake for more than two hours in a row, I'm going to go back and get back to France. But the fact is that, and again, this is where my methodical brain comes in as opposed to the creative side that really in some way should have just gone back to France. <laughs> Might have bust my head again, but hey. <laughs> Said, hold on a minute, 21 years old, your CV reads, I was doing this, this and this, nothing of much gravity, mm. but leading towards something. I went away snowboarding, gap year, mm. got my head bust, recovered, went back snowboarding. Mm. Yeah. And so even from 21, kind of that's a massive, massively important part of your life. 21 to 26, yeah. 27, you've got, you know, <laughs> you don't even think about old age at that point. Yeah. You're still in the heyday of your youth. And so I had to make the very serious decision about even though I've never been a fully career-minded person, I had to be mindful of how that would look, even just for basic level employment years later. Could have mm. just gone back to France, would have loved it. I missed out on a lot of stuff. It was just, Facebook just started coming in a few years after that, so I got to see it all as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, again, don't regret that. I've had to, had to stick to what I've, uh, what I've done. Mm. That's like one of the biggest life lessons. I mean, And that was a lot of shitty jobs that I had to do. Cleaning Uxbridge, Uxbridge yeah. Union. I was a cleaner at one point. I worked with, not for the police. Hey, no one's going to like that. But I, was, I went worked in a crime file store for a short point. They held all crimes from, I think, war times all the way through to the mid-90s. Funny enough, if I worked War in crimes? Everything. Everything documented in crime files. They had literally, it was like an X-Files style, uh, what would they call it? A hangar. And it had mesh floors. And it had library style set up, you know. You oh, the like the intro scene for Ghostbusters. I don't know if you've ever, ever seen <laughs> the, flicking the books that go past. It was like that? Man, you had to turn a light on in every alleyway. Wow. Again, corrugated floors, three floors high. And they had a section for murders, for sexual assaults, for worse stuff. Graph? Like Any graph? You know what? I wish I'd looked, but funny enough, I'm sure a few of the graph lot were probably in some of the other crime files. <laughs> more top well. ender, yeah. <laughs> and ironically enough, my job was when they were actually switching over to digitizing it. And, oh, uh, so you would have so had I'd have to, you know, they said just glance, but you'd have to look through these sometimes big, massive boxes of case files and decide which ones to throw and which ones to keep. Now, when you talk I about. I wish I'd known well, earlier, man. I could have helped some of you out. When you talk about screenshot, na sat nav for Recky, that sounds like one hell of a location. Man, right? this. You used to see stakeout photos, long drug, yeah. UFO was, stuff? Sorry? Anything UFO related? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, it wasn't a, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> a, a special little yet. corner for yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't say I'm that interested in conspiracy <laughs> theories and yeah, stuff yeah, as yeah. well, man. There's true life, there's stuff that's hidden away. Mm. And there's stuff that unfortunately we just don't have enough time to consider in life because yeah. it's just too busy trying to get on. Have you found any of like what you learned in that period of time, particularly in the crime files, that you can adapt or you have any relationship with your... Your uh, documentation? Your Style documentary. guides. I remember, you know, again, we weren't supposed to look at too much, but I remember looking through the photos and seeing, you know, pubs in the 80s and 90s with their patterned floors, <laughs> uh, multicolour patterned God, floors good. and stuff and yeah. dark oak. And, and that kind of just lends to uh, strengthening the idea of the times that we had then, the smells, the sounds, the sights. Yeah. Okay, albeit with some of those shots, there was a big puddle of blood in the floor <laughs> <laughs> and lots of uh, evidence markers put out. Yeah. But yeah. It also, I guess, in terms of, you know, you're only just a step away from potential danger. I mm. guess that kind of element as well. And I've always kind of flirted with that mm. in, in many, many ways throughout mm. life, whether it be with my camera work and trying to take steps past when normally people would tell you to stop filming or, or even just in life just telling you, you know, no, you can't do this I've no, no, I'm, I'm going to put this out there. I've noticed that about you the most. Whether it's risking your life on a on a rail on uh, a you know on skates to doing other things and putting yourself in you know the responsible place of dealing with something, you're very much the first guy to step up to that fear. Respect. It's true. I've seen it happen multiple times with you, where you're quite happy to. Brenda charge. Okay, fine. Let's let's have it then. And I just don't believe in half assing stuff, man. Mm. I don't I don't believe in if you say you want to do something like you know, it's a bit of a cheesy one, but they always say we're so much more capable we're capable of so much more stuff than your bodies think you're allowed to do or able mm. to do. Mm. So whether it be skating or filming or crossing lines of comfortability with people, you know. Do you enjoy that? 
Yeah, like one of my uh, and an ex and a very close friend, still very close friend. Like I remember we were out and about one time, and one of her friends who didn't know me came up came up to her and said, uh, "I think." That's your ex over there about to get stabbed by a crackhead. <laughs> or crack, no, not even a crackhead, a crack dealer. Yeah. And her, one of the few people that knows me that well, was like, oh no, he'll be right. I bet you in two minutes they're shaking hands and sharing stories. And yeah, true to form, that's, yeah. yeah, always. And I don't do it for attention or to be loud or mm. even just to prove to myself that I can do stuff. But it's like if I have a genuine, genuine interest or a want to understand, I will ask people questions or I'll put myself into places that wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily make me feel comfortable. Mm. Or even with the skating, the whole concept, you know. Ah, back to the South Bank again, many years later. So that place held, holds such big It's a skate park, in, by the way, from that side. Skate park, yep. art spot, scenic spot, date spot, everything, man. Yeah, yeah. But years later, I was up on the Hayward Gallery on my rollerblades, working out how I was going to jump over the side. <laughs> it doesn't feel humanly possible. And again, the first few people to try it didn't think it was. But then as a few more people try it, Others feel able to try it, you know, it opens norm, up other people's yeah. horizons. But me, myself, stood at the top of that going, how the fuck am I going to get down? This is a thing about an 18-foot drop, something like that. Next time you're at the gallery, see the stairs going up and uh, you got the skate park below. Just yeah. look at how high that is where you got all the food vans now and you had to jump over the side of the ledge down to the floor. It used to be called the London Leap of Faith, still is. And I'm still very much not about that in my day to day. <laughs> mate, you skate up to that and you go don't want to do that, I'm going to be dead at the end of it. And then you just have to go, if I skate up to that and try and bail out halfway through, then it'll do you more you're injury. You're going to damage yourself yeah. so much more than if you do it. And that's always been my approach in life, it's just three, two, one. That's fucking hard. Why not, man? No, Why no, not? No, yeah. And if more people did that, to a degree, consciously, conscientiously, and I'm not talking in, in regards to other people's feelings, you know, be cautious of others' feelings and so mm. on, but in terms of your own um, blocks, mm. Yeah, three, two, one. Do you put that in ambition as well? Do you put that with every kind of work practice? That's quite a broad I, question. I, isn't no, it? I still have my comfortabilities. I, yeah. I can shy away from stuff, but the time that I get the best results is again when I go right. Just go for it. Yeah, you know. So go sometimes, if we're talking about practical work scenarios, yeah, like oh. I don't want to message this artist just yet. Let me get stuff together. No, just jump in. If you don't ask for stuff, how's it going to happen? Yeah, how's it and if you happen? ask too late, it might be someone else asking it after. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you'll only think back later thinking, fuck. I'm yeah, what if? Yeah. So many things, even just in my own life, that I probably, you know, it's not like I've been perfect in everything. Like, There's so many things, not that I can necessarily focus on or draw back on, but there are, there are quite a lot of things where I've gone, shit, I should have just taken that opportunity or just done that or just jumped in. I'm not worried about the consequences. You know, I've that's, that's life, that's experience. No, I've seen it, you man. doing it with videography. I mean, one more recent one. I mean, apart from the... the, the oh, wait, could you mind if I... Can yeah, you hold go on for to it, that? Go. I've got a concept, and when you see it, <laughs> oh, it's going to bring worlds together. It's going to be done differently to anyone else. And yeah, it's a replicatable idea, but no one's going to do it like we do it. It's mm. not a me thing, it's a we thing with this. And I have been procrastinating. I think I actually... Asked you to be involved in it. Do you yeah. know? Yeah, I won't yeah, say yeah. too much, yeah, but yeah, 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 all good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. It, it's a wicked idea. Everyone I've told about it was trying to make it happen, but at the same time, it's only me that's actually stopped this idea from happening. It was never a money thing. We're all doing it completely off our own backs. Like, okay, maybe that is the problem with me, is that I feel like I'm asking for other people's time, and therefore I want to come to them with the strongest, most simple, straightforward plan so that they can just say yes or no. Mm. Here's my verse. Ah, that's saying too much. Um, uh -huh. Maybe I'm going to use this now. Saying this now, I've, I've kind of solidified it. It's I been incubating it and now, you've, now you're going to put it into action. Yeah, you'll get that call from me this that's week. That's what I like to hear. It's going to be done before February. There Ooh. we go. I've said it now. If it's not out by February, Jordan, you've let yourself down. <laughs> I'd have let myself down even more if this podcast don't come out and he's already done it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sorry, yeah. you were saying I kind of bit... Oh, no, 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 absolutely, no, 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 no. There's certain, there's certain projects that we hold in high regard that we don't do something for a reason for whatever risk factor it is. What I was going to ask you is, what's the most riskiest thing you've done that you think to yourself, even now you're proud of? Like, fuck, that was so risky. I mean, it could be like, I don't know, Amazonian jungles and you're being chased by, you know, tribes, I don't know. Man, I'm going to have to filter through. Yeah. Can we do a little test card? Yeah. 
little girl with a chalk. Oh yeah, little girl with a chalkboard. Yeah, we've just done it. No. Okay, let's get your chalk. <laughs> oh man, yeah. There's so many scenarios. So many. Oh fucking hell. I'll oh, just one quick one. I wouldn't say it's the most dangerous thing I've ever done or anything, but we got one. Funny enough, so well we got three in a way. Wow, like, nice. Basically, I got hit by a <laughs> random fact of my life. I got hit by three cars in about three weeks. Um, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that clumsy. Um, I, was hit, I was about 17 years old, heading to a nightclub with a friend. I walked out by where there was a zebra crossing. Anyway, this isn't the main part of the story. So, you know, cars are parked on those zigzags. As they do. So you can't really see left and right. No. And anyway, phew, lashed by a car, went through the windscreen. Long short. I went back to the nightclub that night as well. Got hit by another car three days later on pizza deliveries. Sorry, I'm only adding this because it sensationalizes it a little bit. These two parts of the story aren't important. That one, I did a little f flight over the car. Ended up doing a front flip midair and almost, I remember being well proud because I almost landed on my feet. Jackie Chan. Yo, that's hard. But um, yeah, so those that happened within three days of each other. But then three weeks time later, um, I was on my street. Must have been about 17 years old. It was a nice sunny afternoon, just getting back from college, driving on my ped down my street, nearly home. And there was an old lady on the opposite side, on the pavement, walking along. And I watched this car coming up the opposite way from me. So I was going down there and they were coming up there. And I watched them drive past me, screech their wheels, passenger jumped out and ran all the way to the other side of the road to the old lady in front of me and just smashed her. Straight at the fucking forehead, man. Just, that 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 the vision of that just hit me. It was mm -hmm. it was horrible. I didn't know what had gone on or it was clearly wrong. So anyway, he's grabbed her bag and he's run. So it's all become a bit clearer. Mm -hmm. And I just remember naturally just dropping my ped, like somehow still landing on my feet whilst it was in motion, and chasing back after this guy in my helmet. And I got to him in the car just as the car was starting to peel off. <sighs> Grabbed him on his shoulder, you know, from behind or whatever. And the car, he's just got in at that point and the car started making way. No. And so I've grabbed, I can't remember if I've got my arm sort of further around his neck or whatever, or I'm holding onto the seat belt or the car door frame, but they started speeding off. And yeah, actually, that's funny as fuck. I can still remember the license plate number. Stop. I remember they sped, so I'm halfway down my street. We sped all the way up to the top. And I saw a girl that lived at the top of the street who I was friends with. And I was shouting, B5, not bust, I had my helmet on. And I was, so I've been dragged by this car and it got to the point where my feet couldn't keep up with it anymore. So I just let them kind of flail and drag behind. So I'm getting dragged and the guy's slamming his door on my arm going, get off, get off, get off. Kept my arm around him. And then I see my mate as I'm getting dragged by this car. No <laughs> I see way. my mate and I'm shouting, B592, KCD. Brown Datsun or something like that, Nissan Cherry or something like that. Yeah, yeah anyway, she saw me. She just looked like shocked. Um, I don't know what happened from there, but as it got to the top of the road, I realised I'm not stopping this car. Like, it's just me. And so I let go. It's only going to go faster and faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then funnily enough, I found out through one way or another that the old lady had been in a chip shop. Old people don't tend to like keeping money, or maybe they do now, I don't know, but they didn't like keeping money in banks. Mm, Everything yeah. was stored at home. So she'd just done a big deposit, a uh, big uh, withdrawal. They'd seen her in a chip shop with yeah, bags course. in her pocket. Yeah. And yeah, just hit her when they could. So yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah. I missed, I had a really nice gap jacket actually, I remember. <laughs> it got yeah. burnt, it was a plasticky one and it just got burnt. But yeah, just doing, doing stuff like that. I'm not trying to, what, what do they call, I'm not trying to virtue signal or anything like that, man. But I, I always resonate massively around people that are that kind of person. Your you know. your 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 life is a movie. It's like Jordan. Oh, there's lots of funky stuff. Look how that took up the majority of the podcast. Jordan, about that. it's a fun story though. Jordan, the death wish grant. You yeah, know, just definitely. <laughs> yeah, to a degree, man. Like again, it's just three, two, one. Do it, like yeah. old lady, and she sent me a card actually. I remember there was a newspaper clipping that said "Teen Saves the Day" or something like that. And oh, that's so sweet. She sent me a little card just to say, you know, they found the guys. They didn't get the money mm. back or whatever. They were brownheads, man. Okay, Heroin. I'll do it, yeah. yeah. So the card slipped down to Southall and it was just gone by then. You know, like, there's a moral to all of this. Is you know, carp diem, isn't it? It's just live. What was that? Live. Live for the moment. Live for the moment. Yeah, for real, man. 
can't live for the moment too long, otherwise just shit doesn't materialise the next day as well, man. It's lovely living for the moment, but mm. you've got to kind of have some idea of where you go. Well, if that's your if that's your persuasion. If you want to feel like you're progressing, if you want to make like feel like you're making use of the vitamins that you've got, mm. then yeah, you've got to have a bit of a goal. Not not much happens for people just naturally, you know, no, unless you're just one of the one of the one percenters, you know. Well, you get these random calls sometimes where things just come out of the blue. Yeah, true. Oh, mate, seriously, I love that, man. Mm. Love that. And yeah, you've got to be ready to jump for those occasions as well. So one of yeah. those occasions was when Killer Kells calls you up and uh, suggests the idea of, have you ever done voiceover before, Jordan? Have you ever done commentary before, Jordan? No, have you ever done... <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. No, it's good. Keep trying new stuff. And we're doing all right, aren't we, man? Yeah, we're like, doing all right. It's a good look. Respect yeah. to everyone that's watching them as well, yeah, man. We're yeah. watching it grow. So if we're talking, we're talking about here the, the graffiti battles that are going on, if there's a sultry voice, of course, is of Jordan Grant. Hello. Um, yeah, and, and it, it, duck to water, in my opinion. Yeah, it that's was, very nice of you to say, man. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's generally been positive feedback from people. I can understand why people might be a little bit purist about stuff, but yeah, this is... What were we saying before? This is the first time that something like this has really been done in this format. So and we're learning as we go. You know, first to do it, who can tell us how to do it? Yeah. You know, we're always open to other people's suggestions and thoughts. We've obviously got a clear passion for it. Yeah. You know, it's how we met is just both being massively interested in that sport and not necessarily, mm. you know, having the hands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah man. Know, but always to, to be, it's funny because to be spectators like we are, we inadvertently find our own way of not justify, explaining scenarios and why certain things play out. From your side, it's more of a sportsman point of view from, a you know, the adrenaline junkie of snowboarding and, and uh, blade rolling. But also from my side... Blade rolling. Sorry blade to blow you up on blading. that, but I can't let my skater friends hear that, man. That's what you said it was earlier. Big, nah, come on. <laughs> big up all the London skaters as well, yeah, man. I'm, I'm Josh. Even Mr. Josh. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And big up Swag as well, because he was a donner. He's a, yeah. still oh, is a don. champion roller who's yeah. come back and made good of his life. Serious. Okay. Again, Serious like role. It's all about people who are willing to accept themselves and wear it on their sleeves and just be, yeah, just real people. Real people. Man. Yeah. Real people. Yeah, respect. And that's the thing about graph writers, you know, when it, when we're talking Not about. Not all, podcasts. man. Don't get it twisted, man. Go on, let's do it. Uh, elaborate on that, please. Why has your experience with graph been so, so strong? Because of the people that you've actually kept around you as well, the people that you've clearly pinpointed as being real. You All know, day. For better or worse. It's super important. I know people have told you stuff like, not about yourself necessarily, but people have told you, oh, you should, could do this a bit better or mm. oh, people are going to see that like that mm. and you've adapted to it. And yeah. then at the same time, you haven't always just taken what people have said. You've gone with, it, with your own flows. convictions as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good on you, man. Because we're talking to people that may not know about graph or may not know about street culture. And I think that's something that I know you and me both take on board when commentating. It's like we have to think for people that are just walking in and they just happen to be big fans of Crept or big fans of, you know, Mir or all these other characters that are coming on board. And it's, it's Man, I'm not even thinking about big fans of... I think most people, you know, until you're on the inside, you don't really, or at least halfway in, you're not really looking at names and letters unless you're one of those that's just like yourself, you know, mm. when you were coming in the trains from Sussex as a kid mm -hmm. and you were really, always rate that, always mm. paying attention to mm -hmm. words and crews and I see how you include that in now. That's where your authenticity comes from, you know, and it makes up for some stuff as well. But yeah. no, like, sorry, where were we? What are you, what are you saying? Uh, just reiterating, reiterating what uh, amplifies and bite sizes the approach to graffiti battles simplifying it for yeah an audience. so sorry the public aren't always aware of words or whatever but they mm. do always have a view everyone always has an opinion of you and they're entitled mm. to it some sports don't care about it and it doesn't mm. matter but you know we are trying to help make this more <laughs> even for a vandalistic sport in its roots you know trying to mm. make it more tolerated or expect uh, or understood on the basic I don't think most public are looking at names and words and going, oh, unless it's like, you know, mm. no names mentioned, but certain names are just, you know, yeah. getting their, their, their top line press and so on, mm. rightly so. I think it's more just about dressing it and preparing it in an authentic way, but in a way that also makes it be able to be appreciated by mm. others that don't necessarily have those refined eyes. Mm. You know. See what I'm saying? That's why you do this, baby. This is why I'm talking slow for once. <laughs> <I can. laughs> but that's why you make great, you know, co-presenter in this platform. Yeah, nice, man. 
Thank you. It, it is that over. It, it has to be overthought for us to, you know, to to amplify its purpose and its value. I love that. Sometimes I think you've probably done this yourself as well. You've people don't gauge their style themselves, myself included, yourself. You know, you wouldn't be able. It's really hard to write a bio about yourself, but someone mm. can tell you about you till the cows come home, yeah. as I often do with my friends. Mm. But if trying to explain, like, for example, there's certain way that people do their lines and stuff like that. I can't find any examples here, but there's just a certain curve that literally couldn't be taught to you. It's just they've crafted it and learned it. And you try and mm. repeat what your understanding of that style is or what the rules are to it, not that there should be rules, mm. but... It's nuanced. And people, people don't... They're like, I'd never even thought about it like that. Mm. And if I thought about it like that too much, I probably yeah. wouldn't have these nice, comfortable lines. Yeah. But, it, you know, but it you can't overthink stuff too much, but at the same yeah, time, mm. it's nice to try and understand stuff, to give people other perspective. Like, for example, when you interview, you probably mm. give people quite a lot of extra thinking to do, you know, yeah, just by, by the way that you Myself phrase questions included. or whatnot. Yeah, but, you know, turntablism as well, that certain hand movement that defines someone's style is uh, it's what we geek over. Mm. Can't be replicated so easily. Yeah. I think that's the whole point of showcasing things like this. Well, all it? of that stuff gets done so in here. I love that you dropped turntablism. I heard, was it you that has taught me this? That was a Babu word, right? And <laughs> yeah. you've had him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. See how it, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't free planned. <gasps> no, yeah, no, he actually true. coined that term apparently. Yeah. And so what was turntablism before the I is, uh, the ism? Yeah. No. Nah. But yeah, um, oh man, I got so caught up with that little bit of random information. I've missed my answer on things. Um, uh, Tracy168. This defining the term wild style, yeah. which again is just inherently used so yeah, true. regularly. Yeah, and actually lots of people have a slightly different interpretation of that word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And, reinterpreted, and reinterpreted all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's an interesting journey that we're going through with this one, isn't it? Yeah, let's see where it goes. Let's hype it up, man. I want to see... Boost, 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 boost. I want to see, yeah. I want to see my involvement more strongly on the camera side when you get your sponsorship or whatnot. <laughs> yes, you understand this is pilot mode we're in right now. We have the general right here. Jordan Grant, what's the future, my brother? It's an unpopular unpopular statement to say. I just want to keep doing more of the same. Mm. I really enjoy the variety in my work. Mm. I like jumping between scenes, jumping between styles and approaches. It keeps things fresh. Pardon me. Um, I want to get into something slightly more solid I, it would be nice to say you know by the end of my life whenever that happens that there's a slightly longer standing testament to my work and what I was about I hope that everyone feels like that in some way or another you know we are mm. all special individuals and unfortunately we've all seen enough funerals to know when you die often doesn't feel any more mm. special than the last one you went to and mm. lots of the sentiments that were said were said too late you know, but I, I would like a some form of lasting testament to my work that people can refer back to. Something a little bit more than, oh, look at this wedding video that Jordan did. Or mm. there's a video, a music video that Jordan did with this artist once. You know, like, I'm always trying to build towards something. But I think now, it's not that I'm necessarily about the money, but I'm about the format. And I know that without regular understanding of your planning system and of actually making things happen that you said were going to happen it doesn't build towards anything stronger than what you were doing anyway so much like i was saying about the shoot that i'm going to make happen before february i'm going to do that and i'm going to do it to the fullest even though it's a personal passion project you know best ones are the other stuff that i take on i'm finding that i'm you know no disrespect to anyone's money but i'm under quoting for quite a lot of stuff mm. I'm not respecting the fact that so-and-so takes this much time and that if I was a boiler repair man, <laughs> I'd be charging £100 an hour mm. and a boiler repair does take 12 hours sometimes. So what do you do then? You don't complain about it. I'm also going to try and make somehow, I'm not going to do this alone, obviously, but help to start building that mind state of art is actually worth something more. If you want to call it a service, not that it is, but if you want to call it a service in this term, that art is actually more valuable than any formulaic or uh, what do they call it? Like a black and white thing like, oh, the boiler's broken. Well, it can only be the expansion vessel or it can only be this valve or whatever. Like 
art, you can go so many in so many different ways. Why isn't that more of a commodity? Uh, sorry, more of a valued art, uh, valued. Mm. If the deck of cards are falling, it's how you build, rebuild it because that's the creative process. Yeah, man. Yeah. The amount of shit that I've done where people see the final project, final product, and they don't realize how many times it's actually cycles had to get to cycles that point. And cycles, yeah. The amount of trial and error, and that goes across the board for any art form. This isn't just filmmaking. This is anything. Mm. So, yeah, it's about picking my battles so that I can start creating more of the art that I want to create. Mm. I have a vision of that. I know that sometimes down it's down to, say, a particular client base or a budget base that I can't do some of the more exciting stuff. But that hasn't always stopped people before, mm. you know. I want my videos to be watched. You know, you've watched it, especially in this era where people can't watch things for longer than 20 seconds. Mm. I want it get to get to the point where people watch one of my videos and actually they then press play again on the damn thing. Mm. And then creating that mind state of longer form, healthy material. How long do even, you know, people our age as such watch a television show without flicking through your phone? Mm. Or without, and I know that's kind of a, a mode of the world, but how can we change that? It's not healthy. It really isn't. There's no way we can tell us that amount of multitasking or uh, selective attention is healthy. Mm. How do we get that back? You know, albums now are what? Okay, I know it's down to budget constraints as well, but uh, music albums have nine tracks a lot of the time. Now, that's great if you've got a concept, if you've got a world and a flow to track ordering and so on. But if you're just throwing nine singles at me, how are people ever going to want to buy more of that stuff if mm. it doesn't have a vibe? I heard this thing recently where people are going, remember when you used to get an album on vinyl? <laughs> remember, remember, remember. <laughs> And you used to listen to one side. And because you almost couldn't be asked to flip it over, even though the album was built as a concept with track, specific track ordering, you would find yourself still just listening to the first half of an album. Side a, all the time. Over, over, yeah. over. It's true. And that became part of the fabric of your being. It's funny, I, I was going to try and not talk about this, and Jazz, you're going to hate me for this, but there's been one particular theme tune or one show where the music, you remember cartoons of the 80s? Of course, yes. There was so much more wholesomeness to them. There were storylines that then had the sort of gambit, the up and the down, but then they had a moral at the end. Then they'd give you surrounding information, like, for example, M Mysterious Cities of Gold. Yeah, we talked at about At the this, end, yes. uh, okay, the concept's kind of ski with and the imperialisticness of it or whatnot. But at the end, they used to show you about what they'd been doing in the cartoon. So now meet the Incas and this is how they mm, build mm, their bowls. Mm. And then the Spanish came and did this and shit like that. Like, <laughs> it was holistic. And 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 even the music was made by composers. Like Huge. half of it was amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I pull out. I've actually got it on my phone. And the, the thing that yeah, I'm not going to mess up your copyright thing, man. But <laughs> things like this become the soundtrack and the sound uh, and the the picture, the set the preset to your life in a yeah. way. And it's all inclusive within that one bundle of. Everything that's yeah. zeitgeist. That's why I love, uh, yeah, drop them in as well. That's why I love Task Force because of all of the iconic references to things in my livelihood, in my time. Even if it's just buzzwords and I can't necessarily connect the dots on lots of the stuff, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, remember when this, remember when that? Yeah, times were good. Mm -hmm. Times were great, even when they were bad. Hey, maybe that's just the benefit of youth. Mm -hmm. A beautiful thing it is. Mm. Well, as a filmmaker, I've got to stay youthful. Yes. You imagine my average client is probably going to be getting younger as I'm mm. getting older. So yeah. it's about keeping in tune with stuff as well. Yeah, that's staying, right. Staying relevant, whatever that is. And that's where the thoughts come in. That's where the processing comes in. And this longevity of a, of a career that you've uh, you managed to uphold and still to this day you're still on. busy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I said there it's gone quiet earlier in the year, but the thing is, and there's never a quiet day. Um, I've been doing a lot of sort of soul searching. Mm. I've been doing a lot of, I've had a lot of like the right kind of support as well people reaching out from all corners just to give advice on, you know, how to reshape myself so that I'm not working to live and, and, and staying, mm. you know, okay, grateful for the roof over my head by all means, but not taking, like, I've, I've almost cut off holidays and expectation and stuff because it just got, ends up going back into your business and so on. And you end up mm. living on this cycle just for the excitement of the next job. Mm. Some people have greater excitements than that and, you know, that's that's their thing, but... I just need to take and harness all of this information I've been learning over the last three or four months and that from the kind offerings of people and from my own dedication. And, and now 24, my year, our year, 
hate all of that shit, but I am actually going to make this a year that really counts. You know, I'm going to make myself, by putting these things into place, I'm going to make myself more available for stuff. It's creating memories, man. Mm. It, doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of time or money to actually make, build space for memories. Mm. Some of the best things that I've done that have been have been on a shoestring. Things that I, I tell some of my mates about, and they're like, "Why oh, are you still talking about this?" And it's like because even just the day off work was good. <laughs> but yeah, next year it's about making stronger product and making stronger personal moves as well. And I look forward to that. It's just about saying no to the right things and saying yes to the right things. Exactly. Or wrong, you know what I mean. Yeah. Hey, listen, no, 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 uh, no wrong moves here. You know, everything's an L, everything's a lesson. Jordan Grant, thank yeah, you man. so much for joining us, my Bless brother. Bless up, man. Come Bless on. Up. Bless Roll up. on 2024, we got this. Let's do this. You know what do. And if you're make checking, it bigger. <laughs> make it bigger. <laughs> make it bigger. <laughs> <laughs> nice sponsor, of course. Yeah. Um, we are, uh, we're out like humans out of fashion. If you're checking this out in 2025, 2026, the, the sentiment still applies to you. Get out, get active, be creative and do more. Killer Killer Podcast out like humans out of fashion. Thank you so much for joining us. More talks to come, all right? Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Nice one, Jordan. Oi, do more. <laughs> do more. I like that, man. <laughs> stay lucky, people. Bless up. Peace. Peace. <laughs>